Go to I-Team 8's investigation into the floor of fire and the chase for answers. We've heard from Galen Rose, the first interview that she's given in years. But tonight, we show you how the community in Flora continues to mourn the sudden and tragic loss suffered, along with the hole it leaves in the lives of some who knew the four girls. Perhaps of anyone in Galen Rose's life, the person who knows her best is Kathy Clendenning, a friend who has known her since the earliest days of her move to Indiana. I know for her, Every Monday for the past seven years, she wakes up and it's the worst day of her life. She is referring to that Monday in November 2016 when the two-story duplex Rose lived in with her daughters went up in flames. The case was labeled an arson by investigators. 11-year-old Kiana Davis, 9-year-old Kiara Phillips, 7-year-old Carrie McDonald, and 5-year-old Keone Welsh died in that fire. A coroner's report shows they struggled to breathe until the final moments of their short lives. People just don't understand what happened that night unless you were there. She was a proud mother every moment in their life. And was there a change in her character and the person that she was day to day after the fire? When they were taken away, she just was gone. Like, her joy was gone. Flora, Indiana, where that fire happened, a town of just 2,100 people, small enough that here many know the details of that night. The girls had attended school at nearby Carroll Elementary, a community deeply affected by the girls' deaths, too. It was just surreal. Like, it, it didn't make sense that it happened. Since that fire in the house stood here in Flora, Indiana, at the intersection of Columbia and Division, for seven years. Its charred remains as a reminder of what took place to everyone passing by. It wasn't torn down until a federal judge issued a written order. Now it's an empty lot. But it was just another step in, in to be able to help with the healing, really. To be able to drive by it every day was like, you know, ripping off that scab again. I hope I don't sound callous in this question, but was it almost a relief when it came down? I mean, buses were going by the situation. So you have to explain to all these kids, you know, 600 kids, what's going on. And Jen Bropes was Kara Elementary's librarian. The library turned into the counseling center, basically. That is where we spoke to her about what happened years ago. We got a glimpse inside the school. We were shown the hallways the girls walked and the very classrooms where they sat. Do you remember what you felt? You don't get taught how to deal with that kind of thing. It is outside the library doors into the school's courtyard that you see something special. It is a collection of benches, each with a name across it, a different one for each of the four girls. We talked with Brope's daughter, Liz, in the courtyard. She and her troop of Girl Scouts created the benches to serve as memorials. They collected thousands of bottle caps from people all over Carroll County and shipped them to a company to be melted down. They came back as these. Liz and the girls had shared a special relationship. Especially Keone, like she was always my little buddy, especially at lunch. At least every single day before lunch, she would always give me a little hug and I would just tell her to have an amazing day. <laughs> I mean, she was an amazing little girl, and she was just so full of sunshine and just bliss, so. Who came up with the idea of the bitches? Honestly, I think it was all of us together. I just don't want them to be forgotten. And amid their peers, their spirits aren't. The oldest, Kiana, she would have graduated high school with Liz last year. We had a dedication seat for her at graduation because she should have been there. How did the fire affect you and the girls? Thinking about them now, like in this courtyard, I mean, it just makes me happy. Like that they're, I mean, they're here. Like I feel them here and I feel that they're happy and I hope that they're at peace. What is it about the girls that touches you so much? We say live life like the four girls. So they were always so sunshine. They were always happy. They were always just like ready for the day. So if I am ever having a bad day, I always think of them and I live life for them. Like I'm going to college and wanting to like better my life for Kiana because she didn't have that chance. And right now, we are still combing through documents related to the case and its investigation. We are getting ready for the fourth part in our series, exploring everything around the tragedy in Flora.
Tomorrow night, we look at the investigation and the unanswered questions that still exist. We also have a new response to our reporting from state police. We're also going to highlight some of the things that are causing some doubt to the investigation's progress.